transition means not just the presidency. Obviously, we have a new first lady who will be in the White House. Of course, uh, Michelle Obama sets a certain standard, and each first lady sets a little bit of a standard for her successors. Uh, Andrew Oak is with us, author, award-winning TV producer, behind the series First Lady's Influence and Image, and um, also the author of Unusual for Their Time on the Road with America's First Ladies. And uh, Andrew tweets, by the way, at First Ladies AO and uh, at Giant Squid AO, I guess. (laughs) <laughs> it's a production company for me. There you my... go. It's a little different thing, but hey, welcome back. Yeah, nice to see you again. So I guess we don't have to worry about what we call Bill. Yeah, we just we, we still call him President yeah. Trump. Former President former, President Clinton. Former President Clinton. Slip, yeah. And uh and Mrs. Clinton winds up being like the uh the Al Gore, you know, I guess the woman who almost was president. And uh so we wind up with that. But but what do you look at when you see I mean you've looked at all these first ladies going back to the very beginning. Yeah. And, you know, each time the role gets defined in a different way. Uh, in the case of Mrs. Obama, what's her legacy? Well, you know, you and I have discussed this before. She she had a resume that could have taken her all kinds of places. She could have uh, taken on House. policy. <laughs> well, yeah, and, and still may one day. Yeah. We could see her come back very she easily. Politics, though, I right? understand. Yeah. I, but, but, you know, things sure. things change. And when her kids get in college and do whatever, I mean, you know. A lot of people wouldn't give those problems to a monkey on a rock, but, mm-hmm. uh, you know, she might change her mind. She definitely has lined up to do that. Uh, she could have been a Hillary Clinton first lady. She wasn't. She was more traditional. She's someone that Melania Trump is now citing as a role model, like a Jacqueline Kennedy uh, or a Pat Nixon. I mean, these women, uh, Pat Nixon, Laura Bush, they traveled so much for their husbands mm-hmm. and their husband's administration. A post 9-11 Laura Bush had to take on the world. She was a librarian mm-hmm. that was going to be very quietly, you know, uh, teaching kids to read and literacy like her, her mother-in-law and things like that. 9-11 changed everything. She had to go out for women's rights, women's education, the Middle East, Africa. She went, she branched out. And Melania Trump's already out there. She's already out there internationally. She already speaks multiple languages. Like a Jacqueline Kennedy, she could go into foreign countries, speak their language, wear the types of clothes that they wear there. You brought up something really important. She speaks five languages. English is not her native language, obviously, but she speaks five languages. I also think it's interesting, Andrew, that over time, especially I think in in more, uh, say, 20th century first ladies, that the time defines them as much as the party. For example, both... Uh, Jackie Kennedy and Nancy Reagan were considered to have brought glamour back. Nancy yes. Reagan in sort of the Hollywood fashion and, uh, you know, the, that sort of East Coast liberal, although I don't know if today if John F. Kennedy would be considered liberal, but that sort of East right, Coast right, elite, right, right. Harvard, uh, Massachusetts, that was her approach. But in other words, a bit of elegance to the White House. And that was as, as much a function of the time as it was of the party and the personalities of the women themselves. And I wonder what Melania brings in. Well, you know, she does bring back... Michelle Obama had a great great style and and people she made magazine covers. Melania Trump again already has the jump on that. She's been on magazine covers nationally internationally. We've seen I mean the the clothes that she's been wearing out on the campaign trail and and the election night and stuff. Elegant, fantastic. Um it's funny how fickle people are and how what's good for one administration is not good for another. I mean, Nancy Reagan, if you'll remember, I know I do, got a lot of grief for trying to bring that elegance back. The new China. She was spending the new China money. They've been they've been getting new China since the Monroe administration. Right. I mean, come on, you know, and and but but people are fickle. People have short memories. They're either going to embrace this elegance and think that there is a class there or continuing a very elegant style of Michelle Obama, or they're going to say she's too extravagant. You know, it it, it really is. It's up to her to set that tone. The last foreign born first lady was Louisa Adams. Yeah. The uh, wife of the sixth president of the United States, John Quincy Adams. So it's been a long time since that's been (laughs) tested. And so we have, oddly enough, a president who has promised a hard line on immigration. And here he's got a woman who came to this country legally. Right. Nothing illegal about it. But but that that I'm not sure that that's going to be a part of it. It does seem to me that there are very few women who could follow easily in the footsteps of uh, a first lady like Michelle Obama, who has been considered such a fashion trendsetter, uh-huh. somebody who looks great. Yep. Uh, she obviously is fit. She works out. She has, you know, um, had been a great uh, surrogate for for uh, Hillary Clinton on the road. Not good enough, evidently, but. But it's hard to follow that, and Melania Trump has a bit of glamour about her, so I would guess that would make it a little bit easier in some ways. It does, and I think that if they play their cards right and she gets on with the right causes and the right policies, she can be a a big asset to the Trump administration in immigration. Mm -hmm. As you just said, she came here legally. 
she can say, look, let's all just do it the right way. And then she can take her cause. She's already said, uh, identified cyberbullying. That's a, that's a great cause. She can pull some big star power. You know, who's a, another big uh, advocate against bullying is Lady Gaga, who mm-hmm. campaigned for uh, Clinton. Mm-hmm. So if they kind of mend those fences and get together and say, look, let's work together for the greater good here. At least here, on something we can on agree on. something we can agree on. Right. And she can be very, very effective. So she can be a bridge builder. Absolutely. How much does America look at the first lady as a mom? And I ask that in the context of now, she, they have a school-age child. Right. And, you know, obviously the Obamas chose to send their daughters to Sidwell Friends. Yeah. It's a secure environment. It's a great school. It is obviously top-of-the-line, money is no object kind of school. But, right, right, right. But, you, you know, I'm not sure if even they're going to plan to live in Washington, D.C. It's kind of unclear at this point. You know, Donald Trump talks about how great Trump Tower and their place is there. So well, how much does America look at the first lady as the mom? A, a lot, mm-hmm. a lot. We go back again. We pull in Jacqueline Kennedy, but Jacqueline, but Francis Cleveland was Jacqueline Kennedy before Jacqueline Kennedy, mm-hmm. the youngest first lady at twenty-one when she married Grover Cleveland's at forty-nine. Um, also, the only first lady to get married in the White House. But um, she had young children, and that made her very popular. That made her very real. That made her very human. Um, people like young, attractive people and young, attractive families. The Carters. We don't even remember. I don't even remember. I mean, a lot of people don't remember. The Carters had three older sons that helped campaign. He got in the White House. They disappeared. It was all Amy. Amy plays violin. Amy right. does this. And uh, Granted, they were adults and things like that. And the Trump adult children will go on to do whatever they're doing in their father's administration. But all eyes will be on Barron. It, it, we, we, we love these people to be human. Yet when they're human, we tear them down and criticize them. But but the things that when they have these young families and we look at these women as mothers, that softens them and humanizes them sure. and it transfers to their husband, which Donald can use that. Donald right. can use that kind of kind of uh, help. And it's not like we want to take on the kids. It's not like no. we want to make them as part of the issue. It's more like how much of a role model does the first lady become? Right. I thought that Edith Wilson got married in the White House, too. Uh, Edith Wilson got married while he was president, but not physically in, in the, the White House. House. Okay, it was a White House wedding. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, yeah, exactly. Um, once again, Andrew Oaks is with us. We're talking a little bit about the first ladies, and in this particular case, the transfer of power, the peaceful transfer of power from Michelle Obama to uh, Melania Trump. So from a practical consideration, um, was Mrs. Obama a little less available to the press? I know that's varied over time. Elizabeth, uh, I'm rather... Um, 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 Mrs. Roosevelt, um, uh-huh. Ellen Roosevelt, was very much, she met with the press every week. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Harry Truman's wife didn't want to have anything to do with that. Nothing. Mrs. Truman, nothing to do with the press. Nothing. Mrs. Obama made a lot of trips on behalf of the White House where there was no press allowed. In other words, there were times when they didn't have a press pool, and there was a con- concern that, you know, if she's not doing it, you know, it's a family thing, understood, you know, she doesn't know it to right. anybody. But when you're on the dime and you're doing policy trips, that's something that should uh, allow for some press accompaniment at the very least. So give us a sense of what we anticipate a relationship with the press might be when Melania Trump takes over that role. It's been interesting to watch this develop as well because Hillary Clinton, again, was a more of a policy first lady. She wanted the press around. She needed that to help her. Laura Bush made a lot of trips. Laura Bush surpassed Hillary Clinton, if I'm not mistaken, in travel. And mm-hmm. Hillary Clinton is the one who surpassed Pat Nixon, who was the most traveled before her. Um, Pat Nixon didn't get the attention because the press wasn't the press back then. Not that we have today. Sure. Hillary Clinton took advantage of that and used it for everything it's worth. Laura Bush, a more private first lady, kind of dialed that back a little bit. Michelle Obama took a page out of the Laura Bush playbook and and did the same. Melania Trump, I think until she really blazes her own trail and 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 really gets out there and gets comfortable. Remember back at the convention, she really got got kind of her knees cut out from under her, her you know, kicked out with the, with the whole speech thing and what she said and that was her really first big national political potential first lady thing and and she took it on the chin a little bit. So mm-hmm. so she has to get her confidence back. She has to get her she's very you watch her now she's very very careful in what she says, very aware of the fact that English is not her first language. She polishes herself up and then we'll see how much she wants to let the press in. But, you know, if if they if if they do a mix between Hillary Clinton's PR machine and Michelle Obama and Laura Bush's more traditional role as first lady, they're going to have a winner. How much is this complicated, Andrew, by the children and specifically Ivanka Trump? In other words, a very powerful daughter in the Donald Trump empire. 
And there's a question about what role she might, if any, fill in sure, this sure. upcoming administration. And if she's involved in any way, and I, you know, gosh, people talked about it. His first wife, his ex-wife, right, right. Ivana yeah. Trump being a, 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 she wants to be an ambassador or something, regardless of what happens. But is this complicated? In other words, not that not that Mrs. Trump is going to be, um, you know, pushed aside, but you just wonder if she gets fewer of the headlines if Ivanka winds up having some kind of a role with this administration. She very much could, in a way that Chelsea Clinton could have done that for the Clintons, because had things gone the other way, I really think that we would have seen a lot more Chelsea Clinton if Hillary had been elected, if Hillary had been elected uh-huh. which we have not seen again since the Cleveland administration. When Grover Cleveland moved into the White House in the 1890s, he was not married. He was the second bachelor president, Buchanan being the first. And and his sister Rose was his hostess. Mm-hmm. And that, historically going back, because people died, people were sick, people were old. I mean, that happened all yeah, like the Rachel time. Like Rachel Donaldson took over from uh, Andrew Jackson. Exactly, right. exactly. Not unheard of. Unheard of in modern times, but we could see that. We could definitely see uh, uh, Trump's daughter do do things like that, similarly to what we would have seen with, with a Chelsea Clinton. We didn't see much of the get-together with Mrs. Obama and uh, and Mrs. Trump. No. Uh, I... I, I guess that was by design but i wonder if there was a value to that in other words is is should we does america want to see doesn't america want to see them together as as much as they want to see the president and the president elect together they do and 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 again the way the press has developed in 24 hour news and the internet and everything else we get nervous if we don't see the president on a day you referenced uh edith wilson you know i mean she You're took right. she took over because wilson took a, a 6 month or plus nap yeah. in the middle of a stroke yeah. i mean this stuff just doesn't happen we want access to everything we want to see these women uh, uh talking we want to know what what they talked about. We want to hear read blogs about it. We want to see what they ate for lunch. We want to see what they drank. So anything that we don't get, anything that's held back, creates a mystique, creates an allure, also creates a bit of suspicion. And people say, why didn't we see it all? You know, if if Trump Trump is no stranger to self promotion and and media, and I, and I really think once they get rooted in there, we're going to see a lot. I mean, you know, this whole thing when Trump gets out of office could be a Netflix original documentary. I, it, I'm I, I'm pretty sure he's getting everything on camera. For the first lady, it's a little different, I think, in the sense that in the case of Melania Trump, for example, as a model and somebody who is in front of cameras. It's not that she's not comfortable with him and she's, you know, very right. spare about it. But the other thing is that most of the time when you're a big Hollywood celebrity or something like that, people are fawning all over you to talk to you. They want you yeah. to get, oh, you're so beautiful. Oh, how can you be so successful? It turns when you become a person in politics. It becomes a very different dynamic. The press will say nice things, some, but others will just say to get in there and then kind of figure out a way to deliver the... The, the the jabs and the punches that are going to knock you out. Absolutely. That, well, that's my point about her speech at the at the convention. You know, getting out there as a supermodel and being on a magazine cover. Right. You're not saying anything. You're just sitting there and you're looking pretty. Um. You know, when when people expect policy, people expect certain types of intelligent comments, commentary on the world around you, and things like that. And you're not used to that. I mean, she's she's she's. I mean, guaranteed, she's getting some training. And she'll get more. She'll get more comfortable, find her role. And w- you balance that with her comfort in front of the camera and her image being out there. Then then again, I think you've got a winning combination if they can put that together. We'll see if they keep the garden. <laughs> we, <laughs> we, if the garden keeps growing. We will. Maybe Baron will be out there with, you know, planting some stuff this, this spring. It doesn't strike me as the gardening type, but I could I, be totally neither wrong. Of, neither of them do. But, you yeah. know, the whole thing is a surprise, isn't it? Why not? All right. Andrew, it's always great. Thanks so much. Thanks for having and me for back. And for dressing up for the show. I mean, yeah, look well, at you the know, tie and everything. I know. You know, every once in a while, I like you to know that Excellent. I can tie a tie. Very nicely done, sir. Thank you. <laughs> Andrew Oak, author, award-winning TV producer behind the First Lady series, uh, First Lady's Influence and Image, and, of course, the author of the book, Unusual for Their Time, On the Road with America's First Ladies. Got new chapters coming up with uh, Melania Trump. Twitter handle is at AO.